Welcome back into closing time on Auburn Intel. Auburn's opponents to this point have 29 combined wins. That's the second most wins by any opponent of any team ranked in the top 10. The Tigers' remaining schedule is the toughest in the nation with road games at Ole Miss, at Georgia, and at Alabama, plus a home game against capable Texas A&M, who, by the way, will have a bye week and a game against Louisiana Monroe to prepare for Auburn. With the release of the college football playoff rankings this week, it's now the only poll that matters. Finally, we can ignore the AP and coaches polls, writers polls, and the computer simulations. I've seen Auburn ranked anywhere from third to 10th among various polls after the weekend's actions, but there's good news, none of it matters. Not even Auburn's current position in the playoff ranking matters. Why? Because Auburn's remaining schedule gives the Tigers every opportunity imaginable to be ranked first at the end of the season and enter the playoff as the number one seed. With the schedule ahead, Auburn could even lose another game while winning the rest and still make an extremely strong case for being a playoff contender. The bottom line is this, don't worry about rankings in October and certainly not with Auburn's remaining schedule. The opportunity is there for Gus Malzahn's team. Now they just have to take advantage. I'm both happy and saddened for Auburn senior safety Jermaine Whitehead. I'm glad to see Jermaine back on the field this past week with his team, but I'm disappointed by his lack of leadership earlier this season in which selfishness got the better of him. I've been a Jermaine Whitehead fan since the day he stepped foot on campus. I've met him off the field and have thought highly of the way he has carried himself during his Auburn career. He's an intelligent, grizzly veteran that has an unheralded member of this Auburn defense. He let his team down when he allowed self-regard to cloud his vision and act in a way that demeaned his coach, his team, and himself. As a player, I totally understand how a young man can reach that juncture. When you're as battle-hardened and experienced as Jermaine, yet you're surrounded by those that are not, you're coached the same way as the young ones, you're asked to run through that brick wall for the umpteenth time, you become wearisome, especially having endured multiple coaches in your tenure. By the year, in your fourth year, enduring a tough-nosed coaching, particularly when you've been a significant contributor immediately upon your arrival, the coaching can sometimes become nagging and annoyance, something you grow weary from. I've been there and understand the mindset I also understand the concepts of respect for authority, loyalty, leadership, each trumping selfishness every time. I'm grateful that his actions were not so egregious to warrant Jermaine's career ending as a spectator and hope to see him work his way back to contributing to this team. I hope he learns from his selfishness and can climb out of this valley. I like the young man and I wish him well and for some reason I feel Jermaine will play an important role in this Auburn team's success when it matters most. I have uh, seen the polls as you have, and uh, let me tell you, it's time to forget the polls, go win the game. Uh, the way we get where we want to be is have the winning edge every week. Rhett Lashley, the offensive coordinator at Auburn, said last week that the offense got their edge back, and they did. And they did it by being physical, by having unselfishness, and by getting every play out of every player. But the winning edge is different every week. You know, and, and what the defense has got to do is they've got to find their edge. What the kicking game has got to do is they've got to find their edge. Probably the toughest of those two challenges is to find the winning edge in the kicking game because you've got six very distributed units that are a combination of guys that come out of every other uh, coaching unit, and yet they've got to come together and find an edge out of one commitment, and that commitment is playing for the Auburn Tigers, because that is the most unselfish, this reason we all call them special teams, is because it takes special people to come up with that commitment where you, you really not even, unless you got the ball in your hand or you're kicking, you're hardly ever acknowledged for what you do. So it's time for us to find, in my opinion, what will be the winning edge to put us in the playoffs that we're all seeking to go to, and that's let's find the edge in the kicking game. It's a great point, get their edge back just in time. If we're to believe Gus Malzahn, then they get their edge back as they head to, uh, to Ole Miss. It's perfect timing. Yeah, they're going to need it. It's going to be physical. Um, they better strap it up, prepare well. I wonder what the price of a ticket is in Oxford. It's going to go up probably after being ranked uh, fourth. <laughs> In the, uh, you know in the, those in the guys pole. that stand around outside the stadium with those tickets? Yeah. Oh, they it's just gonna got be, rich. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be a wild atmosphere. Oh, Probably man. the third time Auburn's going into a place this year with the, the quote-unquote biggest game in that team's history. It's hard yeah. to be bigger than uh, yeah. Ole Miss this year. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, this is bigger than Alabama. It's, it's further along in the season, and they're fourth now. Right. So um, they've yeah. kind of gotten to this point, and now this game's a bigger game than, than the Alabama game. You're right, man.
Uh, we'll be back uh, next week on Auburn Intel. Have fun. We'll see you next time. War Eagle. War Eagle.